10 Greek Olympians and their mythos. Hey Crash, today we're going to explore 10 Greek Olympians as promised. More specifically, we'll look at some famous myths that they're involved in. You mean for once we're not going to drag a sequel out for months at a time? Culture, are you feeling okay? Actually Crash, I'm... I'm not okay. I'm addicted. Oh my god. Addicted to facts, that is. You motherfuck! Number one. And in my continuing trend of craziness, I'm gonna reveal these gods in the most fascinating way I know. Alphabetically. I hate when you get excited about organization. But you'll love our first god, the goddess of love herself, Aphrodite. Aphrodite represents affection, romance, and, of course, sex. Now that's a goddess I can get behind. Wait, that came out wrong! You know what I meant! I sound dirty when I'm trying not to be! You might remember from our last video that Aphrodite was born from the sea foam of Uranus's severed phallus. She then emerged from the ocean onto the shores of Cyprus, and when the other gods saw her, they were so taken aback by her beauty that they immediately wanted to take her as their wife. This is the goddess you saw in that scallop shell, by the way, Crash. <laughs> oh, yeah! She's a definite 10 out of 10. One of her more famous stories pertains to her love of the mortal man, Adonis. Essentially, Adonis was the epitome of male handsomeness, and as such, many goddesses desired to have him. Even as a baby, his beauty was apparent, and so Aphrodite wanted to keep him safe, by hiding him in a chest. She gave him to Persephone, the queen of the underworld, to protect, but upon seeing the child, Persephone too grew attached. The goddesses argued over who deserved to have him, and so Zeus made a declaration that Persephone would have him for one part of the year, and Aphrodite the other. This is the Greek explanation for the changing seasons. Winter with Persephone, and summer or spring with Aphrodite. Like an ancient Greek custody agreement? Wow, the Greeks really did invent everything. Number two. Apollo was the god of a lot of things. Music, archery, healing, and oracles all fell under his domain due to a varied and complex background. He was born in the Isle of Delos after his mother, Leto, had fled there. Leto had had an affair with Zeus behind Hera's back, and as such was chased out of Mount Olympus by Hera. Greek mythology is much more mundane than I thought. The gods just sound like assholes. Well, the Greeks believed the gods to have the same flaws as humans, and so many of their issues were petty, inspired by envy or rage. Apollo's arrows were said to heal people, however he was also capable of causing disease with his arrows if he so wished. But by far his strongest modern association is with light. Many people believe it was Apollo's job to pull the sun along the sky with his chariot. However, this was actually the job of the titan Helios. In later myths, there is some confusion over their identities, but they're technically separate beings. Wait! So Apollo has a shrine at Delphi, and he is associated with the sun. This sounds a lot like Al Delfino from Super Mario Sunshine. Funny you should say that, since his holy animal is the dolphin, which is what Isle Delfino is shaped like. All of the Olympians had a holy animal and a holy tree relating to their mythos, with Apollos being the dolphin and the laurel. Number 3. Ares was the god of war, battle lust, and courage, representing the more brutal aspect of war. He was also generally disliked by the other Olympians for being brutish, adulterous, and kind of a, uh, well... A dick? Pretty much. Even his own parents hated him. And who can blame them? When he marched to war, he would bring with him his children who he conceived with Aphrodite. These included Deimos, Phobos, and Eris, the gods of terror, fear, and discord, respectively. This guy sounds like my hero. Well, unlike you, Crash, Ares isn't all bad. Take the myth of Sisyphus, for example. In this story, a clever mortal by the name of Sisyphus betrays Zeus by telling a river god, by the name of Asipus, that Zeus stole his daughter Aegina. Of course, Zeus did actually steal his daughter, but that's apparently besides the point. To take revenge on Sisyphus, Zeus calls upon the god of death, Thanatos, to take Sisyphus to the underworld. However, Sisyphus tricks Thanatos, turning his own chains against him and imprisoning him within his house. Wait, so the god of death himself lost in a fight with some douchebag human? That's right. Maybe there's hope for you after all, Crash. Ouch. Without the god of death, mortals became unable to die, and instead wandered around beheaded, mutilated, and in agony. Ares, however, saved the day by freeing Thanatos and delivering Sisyphus to him, thus restoring the natural order. Number 4. 
Artemis, the twin sister of Apollo, was the goddess of hunting, the moon, and chastity, or virginity. She was born mere moments before Apollo, yet still helped to deliver him. Following the ugly circumstances surrounding her conception and birth, she had no wish to fall victim to the same humiliation. So instead, she approached Zeus, her father, and asked him to grant her eternal chastity. So, Crash, did Zeus grant you eternal virginity as well? What's your excuse? He did, but the wish was reversed by the power of your mother! Hey. My mum is a nice lady. You leave her out of this. <laughs> oh, poor naive culture. Your mother may be nice, but she is a beast in the bedroom. Anyway, Artemis was actually a badass. It turns out that when gods aren't having sex with each other, they can do some pretty cool things. One guy known as Acteon, a hunting companion of Artemis's, once accidentally saw her bathing naked. As a punishment, she told Acteon that if he ever spoke again, he would transform into a stag. Unfortunately, Acteon forgot about this when calling for his hunting dogs. When the dogs reached him only to find a stag in his place, they tore him to shreds. Crash, does that make you want to be any less of a perv? Number 5. Athena is the goddess of wisdom, arts, literature, and defensive war. That is, wars that were fought to protect their land rather than to expand it. She gifted many of the Greeks' greatest inventions to their people, such as the bridle, the yoke, the ship, the plow, and the pot. <coughs> Excuse me for a moment, culture. 420 blades! Unlike the other gods, Athena had only one parent, Zeus. It was said that she burst forth from his forehead already clad in armor, presumably symbolic of her intelligence. Zeus, being the egotistical guy that he is, thought of Athena as his favorite child, and as such allowed her the use of his lightning bolts and other weapons. She was also incredibly skilled at weaving, an art that was put to the test when a mortal woman named Arachne challenged the goddess to a contest. Haven't these mortals learned by now not to challenge gods? Mortals are so dumb. You don't know what a mortal is, do you? Um, no. Anyway, different myths say that either Arachne or Athena won. However, in all of the myths, the end result is the same. Athena turns Arachne into a spider so that she and her relatives can weave forever. Number 6. Hephaestus is the god of blacksmiths, sculptors, and fire. As the son of Zeus and Hera, he works upon Mount Olympus, crafting weapons and armor for the gods. However, it wasn't all sunshine and lollipops for Hephaestus. Some versions of Greek myth say that he was born a cripple, so his mother Hera threw him down from Mount Olympus. What a rookie. You throw people down the stairs to make them a cripple, not because they already are one. What? I mean, uh, nothing. After being cast off, he was found and raised by Thetis and Eurynome, a sea nymph and a titan. His skills became apparent quickly, and he was eventually allowed to return to Mount Olympus as a blacksmith. Don't feel too bad for him, though. He did get to marry Aphrodite, after all. Cripples are so lucky. Wow, you are actually the worst, though. Once, when Ares had an affair with Aphrodite, Hephaestus crafted a golden net to punish them. Kinky. Not quite. As Aphrodite and Ares did their business, the net trapped them naked and writhing. Hephaestus then dragged the net to the top of Mount Olympus, where the gods laughed and the goddesses hid in embarrassment. Hephaestus wanted retribution, but he received none since the gods didn't take him seriously and the goddesses feared what he might do to them, since he had previously trapped Hera. Instead, he cried tears of anger and sadness alone atop the mountain. Number 7. Hera was the goddess of marriage, childbirth, and considered the supreme goddess, appropriately positioned as Zeus's wife and, of course, sister. But their marriage was essentially a sham from the beginning. Zeus had attempted to seduce Hera for many years without any luck doing so. Being the desperate douche that he is, he transformed himself into an injured bird. Upon seeing the bird, Hera took it and held it close to her breast. Ooh, baby Zeus has all the right moves. Zeus then transformed into his human form and took advantage of Hera. That's... not so good. Actually, it's kind of pathetic. He can throw thunderbolts from the sky, but he has to trick a girl just to sleep with her. I mean, just keep in mind that she went on to throw her cripple baby off of Mount Olympus, so I wouldn't say any of the gods are exactly a good role model. To hide away her shame, Hera married Zeus. As you can imagine, it wasn't the happiest marriage, and many of Hera's myths revolve around her attempting to humiliate her husband. In one such story, Hera drugged Zeus and tied him to a couch. Go on. She then invited around the other gods. What? Ugh, no. She planned to overthrow him as king of the gods. But when one of the Hecatonchias found out, they freed Zeus as thanks for him freeing them during the Titanomachy. Zeus hung Hera up in the sky as punishment, and the other gods scattered. But after hearing her weep all night, he let her down. 
Aw, you still had some compassion left for her. Nah, she was just annoyingly loud. Of course, it was on the condition that she never rebel again. And, of course, she said she wouldn't, but did later anyway. Number 8. Hermes was the god of commerce, thieves, diplomacy, and writing, among many other things. But by far his biggest claim to fame is as the messenger of the gods, relaying messages between the mortals and the Olympians with his swift, winged feet. This ability also made him the perfect candidate to chaperone mortals to the underworld. Despite this, Hermes often used his speed and cunning to play tricks on the other gods, either for his own amusement or to protect mortals. A witty guy who uses intelligence to annoy people. Sounds like me. Except you're not fast. Well, except in the bedroom. <laughs> Besides, Hermes is a lovable prankster, and you're just... not. What about that one time I placed your hand in warm water while you were asleep so you'd wet yourself? Come on, that was pretty funny. It was boiling hot water. I had to go to hospital. Yes, but you did wet yourself, correct? No comment. When Hermes was born, he jumped out of his crib and stole Apollo's cattle. When Apollo told Zeus of this, he merely laughed and wouldn't punish Hermes. However, Hermes, being a good-natured god, felt bad and gave Apollo the lyre, which Hermes had invented as a makeup present. I'm sorry, culture. Next time I give you third-degree burns, I'll give you an instrument as well. I call it the world's smallest violin. And it's playing just for you. Number 9. Poseidon was the god of the sea, earthquakes, and... Horses. Yeah, kind of a letdown after the other two. Second in power only to Zeus, he became king of the seas after defeating his father Cronus in the Titanomachy with his signature weapon, the Trident. Well, that is, of course, if you don't count his other spear that he used a lot. Everything always turns to sex with these gods. Haven't they got a Rubik's Cube or something to keep them entertained? Poseidon supposedly seduced over 40 women and had many children as a result. I guess that's why fish reproduce via broadcast spawning. Okay, biologists watching this will think that joke was hilarious. No, they won't. Fine, but I do. Combined with his difficult personality and greed, Poseidon was one of the most feared gods. He competed with Athena for possession of Athens, and you can guess who won by the name of the town. Despite Poseidon producing the first ever horse as a gift, the king instead awarded Athena the victory. As revenge, Poseidon plunged the land into drought, proving he truly was a dick. Number 10. Now I know there are 12 Olympians, and that we've only covered 10 so far, if you include Zeus from the last video, but here's the deal. Which gods constitute the 12 Olympians isn't universally agreed upon. So I made an executive decision, and I'm only going to feature one of the other gods that commonly makes up the 12 Olympians. So lazy. How do you sleep at night? With bandages wrapped around my hands from the burns that you gave me and earplugs in so they can't hear what you do in your room at night. Those sick burns I gave you! Apply cold water to the affected area, bitch! Am I right? <laughs> <sighs> you suck. So apologies to Demeter, Dionysus, and Hestia, who didn't make the cut, because we're going to focus on one of the most famous Greek gods, Hades. Hades was the god of the underworld and ruler of the dead. However, he wasn't actually the god of death itself. That would be Thanatos. His main motivations were to increase his subjects, and that usually meant supporting people who would cause bloodshed. Yeah, Hades and I go way back. Weren't you friends with God as well? Have you told God that you're friend with Hades? I'm not sure he'd approve. We have a mutual understanding. Anyway, Hades rarely left the underworld to venture up to Mount Olympus, and thus was shunned by many of his brothers slash sisters slash whatever they are at this point. But this also lent to his mysterious nature. The Greeks were so afraid of him, in fact, that they feared to speak his name, and so they gave him an alternate name instead. Pluton, meaning wealth, due to the earth being the source of precious gems. His wife Persephone, the queen of the underworld, only became so because Hades stole her from the land above. So Hades was also a dick. Crash, all the Greek gods are dicks, let's be honest. But hey, they gave as good as they got, and damn are there some interesting stories to come out of it. There's not nearly enough time to cover them all here, but if you guys know of some cool Greek myths, tell us about them in the comments below. And rest assured, we'll be doing more mythology stuff in the future. It's one of the few things that doesn't make me instantly fall asleep when culture starts ranting on about it. See you next week. Follow Culture Crush on social media!